Well, and as we see an increase in COVID cases, many of you have waited in long lines to get tested and it's been taking days to get your results back. And we're going in depth, finding out what is the issue here and what we all need to know if we are getting those tests done. Fox Carolina's Brooklyn Cromer talked to someone who has been waiting for nearly a week and a local lab is speaking out about the recent influx of tests. Well, Cody, we've heard from several viewers. They've reached out to us after getting tested and expecting those results within 48 hours, only to still be waiting days later. Now, this is the case with one Greenville man who says he got tested at a DHEC site last Wednesday. It's now five days later, and he says he's still waiting for his results. Well, he tells me he had to miss out on a family gathering because he hasn't gotten those results back yet, and he's not alone. Premier Lab in Greenville says they're receiving about 30,000 tests a day. The lab tells us the number of daily tests has quadrupled since this time last year, and they've seen a 700% increase in the past few weeks. DHEC's lab is, has the capacity to process about 2,500 test samples each day, and the majority of tests are processed at non-DHEC testing facilities. Well, DHEC says they test, the test should be processed within 48 to 72 hours, but some labs are still catching up with the demand fueled by the new variant. The lab tells us they're looking to hire about 100 employees per shift to keep up with the amount of tests they're seeing. We have seen a substantial increase in the amount of tests coming in um, over the past two, three weeks. Um, with this Omicron variant, um, it is so highly transmissible and so it is spreading um, very quickly. So uh, because of that, Testing has increased, but also another factor is that a lot of people are required to get a test to be able to go to work or to go to school. A lot of people who are going to get tested are testing because they're uh, taking a, a trip and they need to get tested within 48 hours of an international trip or they have family coming into town uh, in a couple days. You know, they're usually getting these tests taken because you have something upcoming, um, you know, in the near future. And if, if they're taking five days to get a test back, and, then kind of what's the point at that point of getting the test at all? Well, DHEC recommends anyone tested between December 30th and January 3rd who has not yet received their results and still having symptoms to get retested to ensure they receive valid results. Well, DHEC also says they are working to reduce wait times by making at-home tests available, and they're also working to increase the number of testing sites available. Cody? Brutally thanks. New at 6, the state's 2021 human trafficking reports being released. And now Attorney General Alan Wilson is calling for more preventative education and is speaking with victims on raising awareness. Fox Carolina State House reporter Mary Green has the details. If you take a, a frog and you put it in lukewarm water and you turn it up, it'll never know that it's being boiled to death. And that's kind of like a mind of someone who's been trafficked. It's in your in this water and you don't know what's happening to you, but it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter, and before you know it, you're in it. For nearly 20 years, Heather Pagan was a victim of human trafficking in the Midlands, a reality she didn't realize until she escaped it. But it wasn't just her. For years, Pagan says no one, including law enforcement, knew enough or what questions to ask to stop it. As a victim, it never got identified, in the 18 years I was exploited. When cases aren't identified, it's tragic. And, and we're talking about some of the most basic guarantees in our country. Everybody's inheritance is the right to be free. The 2021 South Carolina Human Trafficking Task Force report details a decrease in the number of cases reported from the year before. However, there was about a 15% increase in the number of victims reported. These crimes are being reported all over the state, with the most reports coming from Ori, Richland, Greenville, Charleston, and Spartanburg counties in that order. But Wilson says that doesn't necessarily mean these crimes are happening more in those places. That is where the most reports are coming from, which means that could be a result or a function of more people being aware, more people being alert, and then calling into the hotline or local um, notifying local law enforcement. The AG you just heard from says the top identified venue for trafficking last year, internet-based commercial sex sites. He says with the pandemic, they are also seeing a lot more of these crimes being based on the internet. And we have much more on this report inside our free Fox Carolina News app. Well, it's Monday, but we're talking about Saturday because <laughs> when we talk about snow, at least the first one, people lose their minds. But... Here's the other thing that always happens. When we forecast this far out, things change. Absolutely. So that's why we're saying 
Look, we just want you to know there's a chance. I never get my hopes up till if it's. Don't that, I'm gonna get my hopes about Saturday about noon. <laughs> That's when I'm gonna start thinking about it. I was gonna say, you know what? I think Thursday you could probably if we're still yeah. feeling it Thursday. But a lot can change. This one time I'm traveling on Saturday, so of course when I'm going to go somewhere, it's going to snow and yeah. ruin my plans. But well, oh well, snow, is snow. Yeah, well, snow. We've been talking about it. We've been excited. The kids excited. We want a nice snow that's not going to mess with the roadways. No ice involved. Right. And, and there's it, no more snow days, so yeah. that's never that's never going to be a thing again. It's so bad virtual. for kids. Yeah, I know. it's like that's never the excitement anymore to wake up and have your mom and dad tell you no school. Go sledding, and then you got to get on your <laughs> laptop and get schoolwork done. Oh. Such a bummer. Anyway, let's take a look outside right now. It is mostly clear, a little frozen up on our camera, but you get the idea. Uh, it is a beautiful evening. Temperatures already cooling down quite a bit. In fact, we're in the 40s now in the upstate, 30s up in western North Carolina. And it's going to continue to get really chilly tonight. So uh, next few days, the big story will be the cold, but it stays dry. You can see on Fox Radar 3D, nothing to track. As we go through the next few hours, notice we'll be in the 30s in the upstate by 10 o'clock tonight, and then dropping down below freezing between 4 and 6 a.m., and then some 20s by the time the sun's coming up. We'll get into the 20s just by 10 o'clock tonight in the uh, uh, mountains and dropping down to the low 20s as we get closer to that morning commute. Here's your wake up temperature. 21 in Asheville, 26 for Spartanburg, 26 in Anderson. So generally mid to upper 20s in the upstate and hovering near 20 in western North Carolina. So chilly for Tuesday, Wednesday, a little bit of a warm up Thursday, Friday. Now that's ahead of the system that we're watching for Saturday. Going to be looking at a chance for some snow and rain, but depending on what model you look at, we've got some differing opinions on what's going to happen. Uh, but all of our models have at least shown one or two runs of snow happening in the upstate. But big question mark still there, a lot to resolve. But notice at least we will warm up a bit before all this happens, then we drop back down into the 40s. And the good news is none of the models are indicating an ice storm at this point. It looks mostly like a rain snow event. So those are always better for the roadways and of course for power outages, everything else. So we'll keep you posted and I'll have much more on those two computer models that are in a little bit of a disagreement coming up in just a few minutes. See you then, Kendra. Well, if you've noticed it's getting harder and harder to find your pet's favorite food, well, we know why. Local pet stores are seeing food shortages, and many of you have complained about canned cat food specifically, but it affects all foods. Teresa Bowles and Prince, well, they went out to Easley to look around, and they're both in studio, and Prince is living the good life, Teresa. I'm, I'm sure Prince is the not running out of food. The is so spoiled. <laughs> Hims is spoiled. But a few weeks ago, I tried to buy him that expensive Royal Canaan food for this Shih Tzu here, and it was sold out everywhere. I had to order it online, but it was a bit pricier. I quickly learned I'm not alone. Completely empty, like sold out. There's not a single can, a single bag. It's gone. Ashley Ballman has four Persian cats. Feeding them is expensive enough, but she couldn't find their favorite brand anywhere. And it's been tearing their stomachs up. I've thought about trying to maybe order directly from the manufacturer, but I'm not really sure how. Easily Saluda River Pet Store Manager Cody McLean says it's not just cat food. We are seeing a little bit more of a shortage uh, in aluminum cans, uh, probably more than dry, but it, it does venture out into other things such as supplies. I called several local pet shops and I kept hearing the same thing. Food shortages are leaving slim pickings for shoppers. Ballman tells me the same problems face the bigger change where she shops too. McLean says it's just another effect of the pandemic. I would say it probably goes back to, you know, a lot of the shipping containers, of course, that are still stuck out there. It's been kind of difficult for the most part. Um, it is a uh, week to week thing. McLean says they can help you find a brand that's close to your pet's preferred food until supplies come in. Ballman suggests blending a little old with the new food for now. McLean just asks for customers' patience as it can take weeks to get more products in. It's been frustrating. I, I feel bad for my animals, one, because they're used to something particular and they're not getting it. I, I treat these animals like I do my own children. We're fighting the good fight, so we're, we're trying. And some pets are picky eaters or have food sensitivities like Prince here. So be careful about introducing new brands to your dog, Cody. Prince has the life. 
Well, some tips before you run out of pet food. Check online to see what stores have in stock. You may be able to order online and have it shipped before your local store even runs out in the first place. Well, we brought you to brought you this live just a few minutes ago. The new mayor of Spartanburg officially sworn in. We'll have more on that next. And with prices on the rise, it could be the right time for a trip to the boss's office. Yes, we're hearing this is the time to ask for a raise. We'll explain. Closed captioning sponsored by Bojangles. It's bow time. Because I, I didn't see you when I was here. Well, I was okay. outside moving around a little bit. I, I did see you. That right there. Yes, ma'am. Right well, you know, I don't know if that was open or not. It looks shit locked. Is the next mic up? Yeah, okay. Welcome back. For the first time in 12 years, the city of Spartanburg has a new mayor. District 5 City Councilman Jerome Rice took the oath of office. You watched it live right here on the 5 o'clock news. And it was at the first city council meeting of the new year. Owen Carrie Weimer was there as well. She is live now. And what did the new mayor have to tell you about his new role? Well, you know, Cody, first of all, the people here in Spartanburg are going to have to get saying Mayor, have to get, excuse me, used to saying Mayor Rice versus Mayor White. Mayor White, of course, was here for 12 years, so it's going to be a change of pace for some people. But the new mayor was sworn in just moments ago, met by a round of applause and hugs from loved ones. He says he's got big plans for the city, but he wants to make sure it continues to grow and improve. 
I'm just elated. I'm, I'm still, you know, on cloud nine right now to have the opportunity to be the mayor of my hometown of Spartanburg. Born and raised in Spartanburg, Jerome Rice says his roots are firmly planted in the upstate. But I want all the kids, not just on one side of town, but all sides of town, understand that one day you can be the mayor. If you want to become mayor, you can look like Jerome Rice and become mayor of Spartanburg. The football coach and educator has worked for Spartanburg School District 7 for the past 25 years and served on city council for over a decade. But it's time to turn it over to someone else and we got a good person coming in to take charge. Rice took the oath of office tonight at the city's first council meeting for the new year, surrounded by family and friends. The 53-year-old, who's also the second African-American mayor in Spartanburg, says he wants to continue the city's growth. I want to bring big business into uh, Spartanburg, but also I understand that the mom and pop is the fabric of our community. We asked Junie White, the former mayor, what he plans to do now and what he's most proud of from serving the people of Spartanburg. Well, I'm going to go back down to White's Exxon and pump gas. What impresses me most about Spartanburg, it's a... Uh, very, very warm community, accepting people for what they are and what to do. I think that's what I'm most proud about Spartanburg, it's because it's uh, a place for everyone. Now, if you weren't able to be here tonight, we carried that live stream on our Fox Carolina News app and our Facebook page, so you can go and check it there and see the new mayor getting sworn in. Cody?